Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I know I say that every time, but I really do want to welcome back. It's Mr. Hubner here with my special guest star, Little Miss Ava, who is now two weeks old. And we're here for another lesson about slope. Now, in the previous lessons, we've talked about what slope is, sloping steepness of a line. We talked about how it, uh, finding it with the rise over the run. We talked in the previous lesson about using the slope formula. Today, we're going to take all of those things that we build on and build another layer to that, and that is finding slope from a table. So just a quick reminder, a quick review, slope formula, it's used to find the slope or the steepness, the rate of change. I put our little keywords down here. Slope, when we're talking about slope of a line, we're talking about how steep it is. If it is steep positively, negatively, if it is not steep at all, or if it has an undefined steepness, an undefined slope. Uh, we refer to that as the rise over the run or the change in Y divided by the change in X, the rate of change. All of these terms, all of these keywords are really referring back to the same thing that we're referring back to the slope. Now, in the previous lesson, we talked about the slope formula, which we have uh, right here. I'm gonna get my little annotation tool set. So the slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or the change in y, the change vertically divided by the change horizontally. And I said in the previous lesson that the order really does not matter when we choose point, which one is going to be point one and which one is going to be point two. That's the only thing that really matters when we choose which point is going to be point one, which point is going to be point two, that order matters. But I could choose any two points on a line or any two points to find the change between the two. We also saw in the previous lesson that there are linear graphs that we're, we're gonna be focusing on specifically, but you can also use this formula to find the rate of change between graphs where you're given a lot of data, we're given a lot of different kinds of data, and you're trying to find the change even over a short period of time as your, as your line goes vertically or horizontally, like there's some vertical change, there's some negative change, you can find the rate of change between any of these points along the graph. So let's get into how we are going to apply, how we're going to be using this formula today. Now, today we're focusing on using the slope formula from a table and it's still the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What we're really looking here, and you can use this, your tables are going to look like this one where you have a defined, the defined x coordinates, the defined y coordinates. Um, you have another chart or another table over here that shows a change in years uh, between the year 2000 and the year 2004, which is a change of four years, between 2004 and 2010, which is a change of six years, 2010 to 2000, well, which is a change of two years. But between each, each of those changes, the price, I believe that was the price of gasoline, also changed. So in the year 2000, the price of gasoline was $2.02 .02 a gallon. By 2004, it had gone up to $2.32. So you have a steady rise, and then another rise between 2004 and 2010, but then between 2012 and 2015, it decreased. So you can find the rate of decrease, the rate of change over time, the rate of increase over time, all using this same formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And sometimes your chart will be horizontal, like the one down here where it has the, uh, you picked out four specific days in the month of June and charted the high temperatures. Now, 
if we were to graph these four points, we may end up with a linear graph, or linear meaning it forms a straight line, or it could be there, should, there could be some slight changes. Now, we're using this formula to find the rate of change. We can find it between each of these sets of days. And all we're doing is we're taking what we learned in the last lesson about using that formula, the change in Y over the change in X, the change in the output divided by the change in the input. That's really what this is using if the side here, like so my, my back to my chart about the years and the price. I put an I and an O because if I input the years or input the change in years, my output is a change in the price. For my X and Y, I plug in my X coordinates. My output is the Y coordinate. So one column, depending on the change in one, it's going to affect the change in the other. So the change in the inputs, as well as the change in the outputs. But let's see what this looks like in, like for what we're going to be doing here in pre-algebra. So the steps that we need to follow. First, we choose two points from the table. And for the tables that I'm gonna be giving you, the ones that you're gonna be doing for homework, those are all linear tables, like so they all result in a linear graph. So it can be any two points from the table. If I go back to the charts here, I may say specifically, what's the rate of change between 2004 to 2010? And is that different from the change of 2010 to 2012? It's all based on what the question is, what you're being asked to do. So for this, just to, for our examples, we're gonna choose any two points from the table. We're gonna plug those values into our slope formula, and we're gonna solve. So let's see, we have, this is the chart from the previous page. For our x's, we have negative six, negative two, two, and four. But negative six matches up with a y coordinate of 11. Negative two matches up with a y coordinate of one. Two gives us a y coordinate of negative nine, and four gives us a uh, coordinate of negative 14. Now, just looking at this graph, I'm going to sidetrack here for just a moment. If I look at my x coordinates, negative six, negative two, two, four, these are all increasing. So if I look at my x coordinates as I go down the line, my x coordinates are increasing. But if I look at the other side of the chart to my y coordinates, my y coordinates are decreasing. So as one side increases, the other side decreases, which leads me to believe, which makes me think that this is going to result in a negative slope. I'm making a prediction based on what I'm observing, what I'm seeing about this chart. As my X coordinates increase, my Y coordinates are decreasing. But let's see. So I'm gonna choose two points, and my points are going to be these, these first two points, negative six, 11, negative two, one. So those are the two points I've chosen. I'm gonna plug those into the slope formula. So I'm using negative six, 11 as point one, negative two, one as point two. So it's gonna be the change in Y. So one minus 11 divided by negative two minus negative six. And remember, anytime we are subtracting a negative, that is the same as adding a positive. So when I say keep change change, I let me get my little spotlight here. I keep my negative two. I'm gonna change my negative to addition 
and I'm going to change my or subtraction to addition, and I'm going to change my negative 6 to a positive 6. So I'm just going to draw those real quick. So keep change, change. Negative 2 plus positive 6. So 1 minus 11 gives me a negative 10. Remember, same signs. If I had the same signs, a positive 1 and a positive 11, same signs, you add and you keep that sign different signs, I subtract, and then I keep the sign of the bigger number. So since 11 is bigger and it's negative, I do 11 minus one, which is 10, and results in a negative 10 because 11 is negative. But negative two plus positive six, same deal, same signs, add and keep, different signs, subtract. Six minus two is four, and since six is now positive, my result is a positive four. Am I done? No, the last step in solving for solving the slope equation is that I reduce. I do. I still want to keep my answer as a fraction. I don't want to change it to a decimal just yet. For what we're doing, I want us to keep our answers as a fraction, even if it is an improper fraction, because that is going to show us our rise and our run. So negative 10 over 4. Those are both even numbers, so I know at the very least they have the multiple of 2 in common. They can factor out uh, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 4 divided by 2 is 2, but since my answer is negative, my final answer is negative 5 over 2. So as I predicted before, my I predicted that since my x coordinates were increasing and my y coordinates were decreasing, that my answer would be negative. Sure enough, I was right because I had a negative in my numerator and a positive answer in my denominator. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. A positive divided by a negative is also a negative. So negative 5 over 2, 5 over negative 2, both being the same thing is that when I am plotting points, I'm going to, between two points, I go down five units and two units to the right in a positive direction. Okay, let's try another one. So I'm gonna choose two points from the table. I look at my x, I have negative one, three, five, and eight. But if I look at my y coordinates, my y's are all six. So if I have the same values for either my x coordinates or my y coordinates, that tells me that my slope is either going to be zero or it's going to be undefined. It's not going to be positive or negative. It is either going to be a flat horizontal line or a flat vertical line. But I'm not 100% sure which one, so let's follow the steps. So I choose, so what I notice about my y values is that they're all the same. So I chose three, six, five, six as my answers. So my change in y is six minus six. My change in x is five minus three, which leaves me with zero over two, so what kind of slope is this? This is a zero slope. If my y coordinates do not change, so if my output, that means that there is no change in the slope. And this can be the same for like prices of houses. If, the, if this x coordinate was actually like 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, and my y coordinates were average price of house was $200,000, $200,000, $200,000, $200,000. That tells me, that tells me A, the prices of the houses don't change, but it tells me B, that the market was stagnant, that the market was flat. If the prices don't change, there's either something, there's something else going on. We don't know about that. All we're looking at here are x-coordinates and y-coordinates. But if we notice that the output values, the y values don't change, then that is going to, when I graph that, that's going to result in a flat horizontal line with zero slope. 
do one more, and then I'm going to show you what your homework is going to be for tonight. So for this one, I took away our hints, but I wanted to show you that you can use this how before I've been saying that for a linear graph, the orders do not matter. And this is proof. So I have four different points here, negative 2, 17, 3, negative 3, 4, negative 7, 6, negative 15. I look at this and I already notice that as my x coordinates increase, my y coordinates are decreasing, which gives us what kind of slope? If you said negative, either in your head, said it quietly, or said it like, I think it's negative, you're correct. This is going to result in a negative slope. So I'm gonna choose six, negative 15, and three, negative three as my points. So I have six, negative 15 as point one, three, negative three as point two switched it up on you. Instead of doing the lower point as point one, I decided to flip them. So six negative 15, three negative three. I plug those into my formula. Negative three minus negative 15 is the same as negative three plus positive 15 divided by three minus six. So, negative three minus 15, keep, ch keep change change. 15 minus three is 12, and since 15 is positive, gives me a positive 12. Three minus six gives me negative three. 12 over th negative three can be reduced to negative four. And where's my, where's my drawing tool? There you are. So the same, the same is true if I switch the order. So three negative three is now point one, six negative 15 is now point two. So negative 15 minus negative three, again, I'm gonna do keep change change, negative 15 plus three over six minus three. which leaves me with negative 12 over three, which still reduces to negative four. Sorry, I went back again. There we go, which still reduces to negative four. Because as you can see, if I look at 12 over negative three or negative three over, negative 12 over positive three. If I have a negative in either the numerator or the denominator, doesn't matter. If one of those numbers is negative, my whole answer is negative. And it didn't matter that I started with six negative 15 as point one and three negative three as point two. As you can see, when I switched the order, I still got the same answer because this is going to result in a linear graph. This is a linear table for a linear graph. So I'm gonna clear all my drawings out. So what do you have to do for homework? I'm going to give you four more tables and you can either copy them down from here and work them out on my piece of paper or there's also attached to this Google Classroom uh, I already made tables for you that are going to look something like this. So I did an example for you where, you, and it has all of the steps. You pick two points. So from that, I picked negative six, 11, negative two, one. I plugged those into my slope formula. I even put our, some of our little hints, same signs, add and keep, different signs, subtract. So my slope for this line is negative five over two. If this looks familiar, that's because it is the slope from just a few slides back. But I wanted you to see it on video as well as seeing it here worked out on the paper that you're going to be doing your work on. And again, for all of my assignments, anything that you have to do for pre-algebra, you can work on it 
either on a piece of paper, take a picture of that, upload it, send that to me. You can do the work on the, pay, on the Google Doc that I provided for you. Or if you need help, give me a call and we can either set up a Zoom session or over the phone, we can talk through each of these tables. Uh, either way, the whole point of this is mastery, is mastering these concepts and showing that you know what you're supposed to do and you can show me the steps. Yes, I wanna see the correct answer, obviously, but more important than that to me is that you know the steps because then you can take those steps and not just find this one correct answer, but in the future, find multiple correct answers and use these steps in different applications. Uh, we already saw that you can use this for linear graphs that result in a straight line. You can use these steps, you can use to find the rate of change in graphs that don't look so nice, that where the change isn't constant, the change goes up and down and up and down over time. Sometimes it falls steeply, sometimes it's stagnant, it's flat for a while, sometimes it jumps back up. You can use this formula, the change in Y divided by the change in X, to find the rate of change, to find the slope for any, any line, any set of data that you are given, okay? I know it's, it seems like a lot of information, but you guys are smart, you've been practicing this. This is just taking what you've been practicing and adding a new layer to it, helping you grow. All right, well, I feel as though my little Ava K here is sleeping, which means that either she's bored to death or she's full from her last bottle. So before she wakes up, before she starts screaming, I wanna say thank you for watching. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions, email, text, call me, comment on the video, uh, send me something through Google Classroom. You've got multiple ways of getting in touch with me. And I really am here to help. Okay, have a wonderful rest of your day and math on.